Looting from the people by the government is not a new thing. We're already used to that. But for people to loot what has been kept for them is the new thing that we've experienced lately. I'm going to be speaking on the looter's paradise. Each time I remember Coolio's best-selling song, Gangster Paradise, I substitute it in my head with looter's paradise. And that's based on the images of thousands of Nigerians uh, who have besieged government-owned warehouses in the last one week. I mean, it's the new low for all of us in Nigeria to see human beings, Nigerians, scavenging for food from those warehouses with such desperation. It's incredible how the bubble bursts for state governments across the nation, from Lagos to Calabar to Abuja. Unofficial whistleblowers have been telling the locations, and almost every day a new warehouse is busted and tons of food looted. Recall that I had asked a pertinent question in one of the editions of this program. The executive and legislature should remember that when a hen perches on a rope, both of them are unsettled. Is it until young men begin to knock on your doors with guns to ask for food that you realize that there is hunger in the land? And we have indeed seen the masses attack private and public properties of politicians, looting food and thousands of items meant for empowerment, but stashed and hidden in their homes. The gap between the haves and the have-nots has widened so much in this country. It is insensitive to feign ignorance of it. Remember, I raised the alarm about this gap on this program as well. And there's a marked increase in the prices of staple foods in the markets again, foods like gari, yam, rice, eggs, cooking oil. And from a simple market survey I did on Facebook, that was pretty obvious. And when the people look poverty in the face, their choices are limited. Survival using devious unconventional means becomes most tempting. Yet we have witnessed in amazement how elected governors literally warehoused the poor in Nigeria by keeping food meant for people hidden for months at a time they repeatedly asked the everyday Nigerians to sacrifice even more for the country's economic viability. In June 2016, at a media parley with Nigeria's vice president, I told him many Nigerians are hungry, and I asked for definite actions. Four years after, with more biting policies like increasing electricity tariff, fuel price, and refusal to pay 30K minimum wage in many of the states, Nigerians are hungrier. The aftermath of the lucky toll shooting has left us stupefied. Our democratically elected governors are yet to explain how and why they have such stockpiles of food in large warehouses across the country. In the same breath, our legislators, whose homes were looted also, are yet to explain why scores of Keke Marwa motorcycles and more are kept in their homes, why thousands of Nigerians are unemployed and impoverished. The American rapper Coolio says, Tell me why are we so blind to see that the ones we hurt are you and me? Our politicians have failed us all, woefully that is. As leaders, they have displayed a total lack of empathy and accountability in governance. Now recall that I had proffered a solution once. My advocacy is that both the lower and upper chamber should begin to account for their constituency funds and proactively audit employment into federal agencies and MDAs and pay more than lip service to providing employment for millions of Nigerian youths. Today, I advocate that the federal government should increase the artisan money and all other monies announced by the government to 50,000 naira. 30, 20, or 10,000 naira won't cut it. It can't lift anyone out of poverty given the cost of living in the country at the moment. Please, listen to the people you govern. Please, listen to me. Increase the monies to a benchmark of 50,000 naira. That's when we're seen to be tackling poverty. Uh, but I don't, I don't believe in sharing money. Mm. Um, <coughs> not uh, rather, mm. uh, it's not sustainable, one. It also breeds uh, more poverty and increases inflation. inflation. Yeah. Um, rather, like they say, don't give me fish. 
teach me how to fish. Um, if you engage the youth meaningfully, create opportunities for them to um, be employed, self-employed and employ other people, you won't have to share uh, 10,000, 50,000 to anybody because they will, you know, indeed share. They'll pay taxes and government will make more money. And, and this, um, it's not, um, you're, you're just saying the way housed palliatives. Uh, imagine also, this is the same way our budgets are way housed in banks, in homes. And so that's why somebody will tell you there is no money. But in the midst of all of that, you see governors buying expensive cars that we don't produce. You see legislators, you know, living large on the state. And, 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 and so when all of this happens, what you see is that the day the internet savvy youths and those you call miscreant will be united. And turn against them. There will be no, way, no place to yeah, hide. Because we're a country of um, impoverished people where, you know, extremely poor population feeding the highest paid legislators all over the world. So that imbalance obviously cannot be sustained. Mm. So it's not throwing money at the problems. It's, first of all, coming to the, t the table with equity in mind that Nigeria doesn't have as much money to feed 200 million people equally, right? Can we use what we have to create the infrastructure that people can use for themselves rather than paying the president, the vice president, legislation, national assembly, state houses of assembly, of huge oh, sums of right. monies and allowances and wardrobe allowances and things like that that make them rich in a country of poor people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, if I go back to what uh, Funke says, um, you're, you're, you're talking about giving them 50,000 naira, not 10, not 20. Instead of the 20, and then, 30 for yes. Asisa money, markets money, Correct. trader money, and, and all the other money. And monies. liberals have said, ah, but you don't give a man fish, you teach him to <laughs> fish. So I'm thinking of the way the UK was run for years and decades, the social security system, where they want you to work, but they still provide something for you. You can't get the work. Yes. So the, the problem is, the government is not creating those avenues for work. Assuming they were serious and they were creating avenues for work and employment and everything, and still giving you 50,000, then it might become sustainable. Right. Because at some point, some people will not need your 50,000 anymore yeah. anyway. That's, that's the first thing. Yeah. So you withdraw the 50 from them. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, there will always be people who refuse to work. Yeah. It right. happens everywhere. It's in Europe. It's in America. It's here. So, but we need to get to that system of social security that the British developed after the World War. We need, we have, in fact, put it this way, we've just had a world war, basically, yeah. on, on our hands. So yeah. why don't we just get up like them and say, right, we've everywhere scattered time for some infrastructure and everything, and then we'll be giving you a little bit just to help you along. You know what's also <laughs> informed, sorry, please, let me quickly say this, because while we were all um, trying to recover from the events of the last one week, the Minister for Humanitarian Affairs are being visiting uh, victims of flooding mm. in the north and in some other parts. Yeah. And she's been giving them money, mm. I think 30k 20, or 20,000. Mm. Yeah. And I'm so miffed. <clears throat> what can not, that do yeah, it's better for not, somebody it, yeah, whose home I has been flooded? Yeah. I agree with yeah. you. That's I, I, just um, wasting money. <laughs> you might as well just go there and see the problem and go away and, and think about how to solve it. And leave money. them as if you didn't really see what happened to them, but you're actually working. I, I, I don't know if you guys saw uh, the just looting. Yeah. I, think, I think it stood out. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. Um, people were on the roof, on, on the, the walls, <laughs> everywhere. If you look at that picture, like ants. It's, it's... as a politician, ask yourself, when these people come for me, mm. who can deliver me? Well, Dino you know Melaye said his neighbor Very good question. Him. Calabar has shown us anyway that you can be attacked. Because they were, they burnt their houses, but they first of all took Looted. stuff. They were very clever. They took what they wanted, generators. I saw somebody rolling out generators. Oh, they took somebody who took Jalingo. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, one of Jalingo. That was, was, that was me. Oh, it might be a welder who needs it. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Okay, I'm up after the break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 